As in Philadelphia, education of parents about sickle cell disease is a central part of the program. I do genetic counseling in terms of trying to explain to the parents how come we are telling them the child has sickle cell disease. So we have some little boxes we call inheritance boxes. In these boxes, we have four tennis balls. We show the various probabilities. For example, we decide that you are an AS and your husband is also an AS. We want to have, let's say, six children. Let's see the outcome of each pregnancy. So they pick and as it comes on the tennis ball, we've written the various probabilities and they seem to understand, oh, that's why maybe my first two children don't have the disease, but this third one had it, or maybe why my first baby had it. Traditionally, mothers are most always involved in taking care of the child. We tell them that this is why you have come to the clinic, this is the program we are carrying out, and we have found that your child has possible sickle cell disease. And it is not through you, but it is through yourself and your husband that the child got the disease. And most of them, they go home to tell their husbands, and some of them would say, I mean, it's not true. I'm not sick. I've never had any disease. I mean, I've never shown any symptom of the disease, so it is not true. They refuse to accept the fact that they have this child with sickle cell disease. Sometimes they refrain their wives from coming to the clinic. Getting across the message about the true nature of sickle cell disease to fathers and the public in general involves a variety of media, including talk shows on the radio, poetry and song. Sometimes when you have a child with this disease, parents um, don't usually combine efforts in helping. And it's an instance where after a fight, the man would say, oh, you inherited that from your mom. But he forgets that it's the two of them. So I wrote this little song and we put in ideas like, um, Daddy and mom, when I was born, I was quite a heavy child. I brought happiness into the house. And now, why have you even decided not to take care of me? Because I get ill often. This is Hannah and Mary are community nurses attached to the newborn screening project. Their task is to track down the parents of babies that have been diagnosed as SS and get them to enrol in the clinic and education program. They also have to follow up patients that have been enrolled at the clinic and then failed to show up. In a city where few people have a telephone, this means searching out families in their communities on foot. Despite the lack of accurate addresses or reliable landmarks, the nurses still manage to locate most of the families they're seeking. Particular case, um, the person said the important landmark is moonlight. Moonlight shoe service It's what the person said. Unfortunately, the house we located is nowhere near the important landmark. In Philadelphia, social worker Chuck Adams also has to deal with the wider social problems faced by sickle cell patients and their families. The disease itself makes it very difficult oftentimes to uh, fit a solution into a problem. With a cold day like today, uh, this family that's living in an abandoned building would have to be taken to a shelter, but they would have to be taken to one that has medical support. If we have a family that has um, general heating problems, no food, situations like that, all of this will have an effect on a family with uh, children with sickle cell disease. They just happen to have a chronic genetic disorder but uh, being poor was probably the first disorder that they had to deal with. Any pain over here at all? The prognosis for children that are diagnosed with sickle cell disease at birth and enrolled in a comprehensive treatment program like that at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia is constantly improving. 
many sickle cell specialists now see the main challenge as increasing awareness of the disease in the community at large. Over the course of the years, sickle cell disease has almost been an orphan disease in the sense that it's affected primarily African Americans, which historically has had a very turbulent time in the United States. A lot of individuals with sickle cell disease were dying early. I think as the numbers grow, as we identify more newborns with sickle cell disease, one in every 375 African American newborns has sickle cell disease. Hopefully those children will become teenagers, become young adults. And if we as physicians start educating not only the child, but educating the child's community, then multiple communities will be educated as well as multiple individuals. And I think that's the only way communities are going to realize what the availability is for prenatal diagnosis, what the availability is for cures like gene therapy, hopefully in the future, or bone marrow transplantation, or realize what palliative therapies like um, blood transfusions or hydroxyurea are available for individuals with sickle cell disease. We really have to start by educating the entire community, and you can't do that until physicians empower their patients. Thank you.